Now this video is probably a little bit overdue given the fact that I have covered a number of PowerShell topics over a, a period of time and now I really want to get on to the file permissions because amongst other things when I looked around at the various new tutorials and videos and other things a lot of people are using the get ACL to get around the whole permissions aka they're just using existing ACL and then transferring it from one place to another so today I'm going to do a completely new ACL setup so we have our demo folder with our two files and as you can see the permissions are identical and they're inherited from a lower folder permission structure now this is important because we're going to cover a couple of things as we're going to replace these permissions and switch off the inheritance in the process. So first of all, let's go ahead and fire up PowerShell because we are only going to use this without admin permissions because our user already has the permission necessary to change the file permissions. So first of all, we need to set our variable which is going to have a new object and our new object is going to be a system.security.com access control dot directory security <sighs> that's going to set up basically all the necessary fields that are required inside of our access object so next we're going to tell it that we want to disable the inheritance that's done by going ahead and adding the dot set access rule protection and then true true which basically in this case tells it off and off so once that's done, then that means that inheritance is now disabled for what we're about to do. So next, we're going to go ahead and we're going to set up a couple of rules. Now, to do this, the rules are going to be that we want to include the current user as having full access, and we want to include the system as having full access. So in order to do this, we need two rules, and I'll explain a little later why we need two rules. But first of all, let's go through. So again, it's a new object. It's a system security access control, in this case, file system access rule. So there are other rules, but we want the file system rule for this one. And then I'm going to put in the username, which in this case is going to be using the um, environment username. So we're actually going to grab the username from the existing logged in user. And then we're going to go ahead and tell it that we want full permissions and you get the idea. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit because the typing will be too slow otherwise. So let's explain quickly what we're doing here. We're creating two rules. The first rule is going to use the user account that we're logged in as. The second rule is going to use the NT authority slash system account. And these are going to be applied in the following way. Rule one will be used to set the access control within our variable, so the ACL. The second rule will then be added to that already existing. So you could probably use add on both, but honestly I find set, at least for the first one, far more comfortable to use. So it allows me to kind of differentiate a little bit more in the commands. So let's go ahead and do the first one. So we're going to set access rule, and then the access rule is going to equal, in this case, our rule one. So it's a very simple command from that point of view, nothing super spectacular in that respect. And then we're going to do the same basically with rule two, but instead of using set, we're going to use add. So you can see that there are more than one command. Now we can't use set twice because if we use set the second time around it would actually wipe out our first entry. So keep in mind that set can only be used once unless you want to clear the information out. Now we're going to explore and see how that looks in our new access control and as you can see we have nicely set up our two accounts that we want to give the access to. And now what we're going to do is we're going to pipe that information into the set ACL and then point it to the file that we want to change the ACL on. So we're going to type out here the full path of the file. Now in this case it's our demo file so we're going to go ahead and go to the C demo and we're going to change the file in question which in this case just happens to be our cat text file. Now once that's done of course obviously I've got to prove to you that that actually is what happened so let's go to the file and check the security permissions on it. And to prove that I'm an honest man, there it is, and there's the change security permissions, and I didn't cut the video, so trust me, this does actually work. 
Now with all of that said, that's great and these things are kind of useful for if you want to set file permissions and the rest, but let's say that you wanted to do something a teensy weensy bit more, uh, let's call it interesting. So here's the full set of commands again, but what if we wanted to do this more frequently? Then this isn't the most efficient way, you don't want to type this out each and every time. So if we turn it into a function, and like magic, here we go with the function, we can now use this to set permissions on potentially multiple files in different places relatively easily. So we're going to go ahead and just get our function up and running. And we're going to use our new function uh, against our second demo file. So we know what the permissions were earlier. We're going to just tell it that, hey, we want this user, which is our first parameter. And then we're going to say on this folder, which is our second parameter. And that will simply go ahead and set the permissions. Now this is kind of hardwiring it, so you could have more variables to give more options and declares. But hey, this is what we want to do. So this is the permissions as is now. We're going to go ahead and hit enter. Now I'm going to go back to the file. And we'll see permissions have all changed as per demo. Now, this is one way of doing it. I would honestly say that if you're going to go ahead and create a function, put it into a module so it's loaded every time you open up PowerShell. And with that, that concludes our video. Now, if you like this video, um, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. And as always, subscribe for more content.